doing well welcome back to my channel in today's video we are talking all about how to set up your first bullet journal and this is from someone who just set up her first bullet journal I wanted to say I finally bit the bullet but then I was like ooh that's a little cheesy. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how to set up your first bullet journal, some things to keep in mind, some pages that you may wanna have at the beginning of it, and basically how bullet journaling works in terms of an index. I have been using mine for a month now, and I really love the way that it keeps track of all of my events. It's all the little things that fall between the cracks for me that I really needed to get under control. So without further ado, let's set up our first bullet journal and welcome to any of you beginners or anyone who is new to this channel, I'm so happy to have you here. Okay, so this is the fun part of the video where all of you stationary obsessed people can get on board with me. These are the fine tip brush pens that I picked up. I bought them at Michael's and I love the fact that they have the two tip options. I also got these little packs of washi tape. I love the idea that they followed themes and that they had different sizes available. In the end, this ended up being cheaper than buying them individually, but I'm not gonna lie, this wasn't a cheap purchase, but they certainly upped my game when it came to this bullet journal. A couple of pen options, it's really important as well just to have blank black pens, and this brush pen, I was a little worried about it bleeding on through, but that's good for calligraphy. I got the soft cover of this book with the light dots, and the reason why I got light dots is because I remember watching Ashley's video from Best Dressed, talking about her first bullet journal. I'll link it below. She ended up getting the one with the dark dots and she was just saying how she regretted it so much. With those pens, I also chose my color pattern. And this is the most stressful part of any journaling experience is actually taking pen to page. I just did my name and uh, I used the soft marker and then did the black over top. So for the first page, I wanted to make a grounding statement. I'm gonna write this a little bit later in the video, but it's my note to self page, and it's for the rest of 2020. I just tried to use a mix of the pens with that one. Now this page I learned from another Amanda on YouTube, and I will link hers below as well. This is called the guide page, and I really loved the idea of this. So you create basically a guide by counting all of the dots, all of the lines, and then splitting them up into two sections, four sections, three sections, so that later when you are creating your pages or boxes, you can basically use this as a guide to create those fun pages and you don't have to be counting all these dots the entire time. This actually ended up becoming handy. I wasn't sure how handy it would actually be, but it did end up working out pretty well. A funny note, I just wanna say, if you guys mess up in your journal, like don't worry about it, it's fine. You will We'll get through it. On this page, I ended up writing ideas because I was actually meaning to write index and I didn't put the end. So I was like, you know what? It's okay. We'll just have a little ideas section. And the premise behind this little section, I decided was that it's ideas for future pages. And I've written a couple of things below there, including habit trackers, which we will get to later. So finally getting to the index. This is one of the most important parts of your bullet journal. And the reason why I made this is just to show you guys what the index for me is going to be. The dot being task, the open dot being event, the triangle being appointment, the dash being notes. I put a star if it's important, cross it if it's canceled, and then of course the arrow if it's migrated. I also have the little heart just in case I have some inspiration. I'm creating this bullet journal in October, which means there are three months left of 2020. I really wanted to make a point of the fact that, yeah, 2020 has been super hard for pretty much everyone, but there's still three months to be had and it's ours to relinquish if we want. So goals, I did set a couple of goals and that included finishing Utober, starting to save more, starting to meditate. And I just figured that it would be kind of nice to set some big goals before breaking down the smaller ones inside of this journal. This is something I saw on a lot of bullet journaling videos and I really loved the idea. So it's things to check out. It's those moments in the day when a friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, family members, they give you an idea of something to watch, something to listen to, or something to read. Now in here, I ended up having to 
add a book section in uh, the music section as well. But anyways, that's something to write down any suggestions that you get. I really liked that it was just for fun and to remind you to slow down a little bit. This is one of the most important parts of your bullet journal, the future log. And the future log is basically set up so that you can again go month by month. And this is super easy again because there's only three months. So it was kind of great to set up my bullet journal with such little pressure. But October, November, December, it's a future log of that month at a glance. So this could be included in this birthdays or big events that you need to remember like weddings. I figured it would be kind of cute to add on the left page beside the future log, things to reflect on and then as well, things to look forward to in the next couple of months. I reflected on a couple of questions and those questions included, what am I grateful for? What have I achieved so far? What were some high points and what were some low points? And then the refreshing is basically going off that and asking, what am I wanting to achieve? What are my goals for the later half of this year? What should I keep doing? And what areas do I want to grow in? By writing this down, I knew it kind of, it seemed kind of silly at first, like thinking, oh, of course I know all these things. But when I actually wrote it down, gave it an identity in my mind. Later, I did fill out that section. Now for YouTube accountability, this is something I want to really start doing. As you guys know, if you're tuning in today, I am starting Utober, and this is one of the first videos in my Utober series. Utober, as I know, was started by Kaylin Nicholson, and I know that other people do October? question mark? Let me know below if you know. But basically, it's releasing a video every single day in the month of October, the cozy season. So I have created an accountability chart and a reference so that I can really stay on track. I've also created a couple of rules when it comes to those videos, like would I watch it? Would I search for it? Is it evergreen? Is it easy to search? And is it in my pillars? From there, I also created a chart basically outlining how many videos I made, subscribers, at the time and if I'm feeling motivated and happy. And then I also wanted a little reminder that I can do this. It's a big task to take on, but whatever tasks you have to take on, you can create a section like this in your book. Whether it's getting back to school and doing all those projects or having a thesis at the end of the year, these are pages that basically are created so that you can tackle those big jobs. I also created a video ideas page. I have so many notes in my phone, on post-its, like all around our apartment in different notebooks of what videos I want to create. And I also outlined my four pillars. So I used washi tape here to really separate those sections. And then I created my four pillars. And those are organization and productivity, style, clothing care, and minimal fashion, content, and creativity and anything to do with creation and then other. One of my main pillars is also travel, but of course with COVID-19, we haven't exactly been doing that a lot. So I still put it in the other section. And there I collated all of my video ideas, which feels good to have it in one section with as well a checkbox. So it's now time to get to the actual bullet journaling part for the month. I kind of ended up liking the way that October looked here because my hand wasn't the steadiest. It made it look a little spooky, which is kind of October-esque. And then I just drew these little pumpkins at the bottom. I was feeling a lot of pressure by watching other bullet journals and other bullet journalers and the amazing artwork that they have. I'm definitely going to be looking into other ways of drawing banners and doing text in future videos for bullet journaling, but I thought that this was a fun way just to break onto the scene. So here is a look at actually using that ruler guide, and this is kind of how you can use it. And this is one of the big reasons why I wrote that ruler guide on the left side of my page. These are the weekly spreads. So a bullet journal is essentially like a weekly planner that you make yourself. And I ended up planning out this whole month ahead of time so that I could put in future events that were coming up. And this is where you're going to use that dot, that dash, that triangle for appointments. 
One of the biggest reasons why I wanted to create a bullet journal specifically was so that I could customize it as much as possible. And one of the things I've wanted to look into is a mood tracker. I made it look like little cow dots and used the purple theme and this way day to day I can assess my mood. I have decided to assess it as in a good mood, feeling optimistic and feeling motivated and enthusiastic. And the second one is indifferent, just kind of going through the day. And the fourth one is unsettled or emotional. So I will have different colors depending on how I'm feeling. I also wanted to track gratitude every single day. I wanted to write something that I'm grateful for. I found that a daily practice of gratitude has really opened up my heart and made my mind kind of trend more towards positive thinking. Other things that I was also assessing was reading, meditating, working out, releasing a video, and stretching. And then at the end of the month, I would like to assess kind of what I took away from this small season. And I really think that a season could be much more than a month, much more than an actual season like summer, fall, spring, and winter. But I feel as though I'm in a growth season of life. And in that growth season, I just want to work really hard for myself. So looking at a glance, I am really proud of how this turned out. I ended up adding this little uh, Polaroid as well at the beginning and added the index. The cool thing about this book is it actually has a natural pagination and as well an index. I added that note to self and just took a glance at everything that I accomplished within writing in this journal. I'm really proud of it and I'm not scared to show you guys video ideas because we're all going to do it in a different way. If you pause the video and check out those video ideas, feel free to grab one and let me know if you do because I would love to see your version of that idea. It's growth season for you too and I really appreciate you checking out this video. Good luck bullet journalers, we will grow with this together. So that's it, that's all. I'm so proud of how it turned out. I'm obsessed with the washi tape. I think it looks so cute. I know that's kind of an extra purchase that you have to make if you wanna have that in there, but it really amped up the look of every single page. So I love it so much and I'm excited to continue on with this. Again, if you've got any suggestions about other pages that I should include or things that you do in your bullet journal that you find really helps you. I would love to see that in the comments below. Or if you're just a beginner when it comes to bullet journaling and you've been maybe intimidated to get into it because that was one of the things for me. I would watch all of these bullet journal videos and see these incredible drawings and be like, oh, mine is not going to be like that, but we've got to start somewhere. I think one of the keys is figuring out just a couple of different fonts, a cursive and maybe a sans serif that you can do, um, and then just mix those together. And then just the colors help too. Don't get too hard on yourself when it comes to just starting in the layout. And if you mess up, don't even worry about it. I just figure this is going to be a journey that we will be on for some time and we'll just get to see the progress. And that's the funnest thing to watch is progress within any project. That being said, thanks so much for joining this video. If you guys are new here, I would love if you would hit subscribe means so much to me as I try to grow this little nook on the internet and that subscribe just allows me to continue to make videos like this. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. The